Okay, in today's video, we are going to do a Coulomb's law problem. And in this problem, we have three charges, and all three charges lie on a straight line. We have, in this situation, Q1, which is minus 16 microcoulombs. We have Q2, which is plus 6 microcoulombs. And we have Q3, which is minus 8 microcoulombs. Now, we are going to determine the net force, the magnitude, and the direction of the force on 3 from 1 and from 2 combined. Now, this is really a two-step problem. We're going to use Coulomb's law and Coulomb's constant to figure out the magnitude of the forces. But we have to figure out the magnitude of the force on 3 from 1 and the magnitude of the force on 3 from 2, and then we're going to add those together. But before we figure out the magnitudes, we have to figure out the direction of each of the forces. So the first thing we're going to do is figure out the direction on 3 from 1 and the direction of the force on 3 from charge number 2. So let's do that first, and then we'll figure out the magnitude of the forces. Okay, here we go. We have Q3. Q3 is a negative charge. Q1 is also a negative charge. Therefore, those forces, excuse me, those charges are going to repel each other, and the direction of the force on 3 from 1 is to the right, and we'll call that F31, the force on 3 from 1. Now, let's look at the direction of the force on 3 from 2. Now, you can see that Q3 is negative, Q2 is positive, Therefore, they're going to be attracted to each other, and therefore the force on 3 from 2 is to the left, and we'll call that F32, the force on 3 from 2. Okay, you can see we had to kind of compare or determine the force on 3 from each of those two other charges individually. Now we know the direction of the forces. Now we're going to calculate the magnitude of the forces. Coulomb's law. Now, we're going to do F31 first. We're going to calculate the magnitude of the force on 3 from number 1 first. So we're going to use Coulomb's law. We know that K is 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared Coulomb squared. The charge on Q3 is 8 microcoulombs. The charge on Q1 is 16 microcoulombs the distance that separates them is 0.9 meters. Now, I would like to point out a couple things before we actually get the result. First of all, we had to convert our microcoulombs into coulombs. The constant has coulombs in it, and therefore we convert the micros into coulombs. Microcoulombs, or micro, is 10 to the minus 6, so I just stuck a 10 to the minus 6 on the back of 8, and on the back of 16. It's not 1.6, it's 16 microcoulombs. And that allows me to cancel this coulomb and this coulomb and this coulomb squared. Also, remember, the distance has to be squared, so it's 0.9 squared, and then the meters will also be squared, and this meters squared will also cancel and will be left with newtons. Now, one other important thing is when we calculate the magnitude of the force, we just use the magnitude of the charge. We don't use the negative sign. We don't use the negative sign. The direction of the force is determined by comparing whether they're like charges or opposite charges, whether they're going to attract or repel. To determine the magnitude of the force, we use the magnitude of the charge, which means we leave the negatives and, in a sense, the positive signs off. Okay? So, therefore, we can multiply K times the charge of 3, times the charge of 1, divide by the distance squared, and we get that the magnitude of the force is 1.42 newtons, and that force would be to the right. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing for the force on 3 from number 2. Once again, K, the magnitude of the charge Q3, the magnitude of Q2, and the distance that separates them is 0.3 meters squared. Okay, so we just multiply those three through and divide. 
we get that the magnitude of the force is 4.80 newtons to the left. Now, in order to get the net force, we have to add up the forces that we have and take their directions into consideration. And this is how we're going to do that. This is the situation we just had in the previous slide. Here's Q3. F31 is to the right at 1.42 newtons. F31, excuse me, F31 is to the right. F32 is to the left at 4.80 newtons. To get the net force, we simply add up those two forces, but we have to remember that F32 is in the opposite direction. It's to the left, and that's generally considered the negative direction. So you can see the net force, F3, this is my net force, is equal to the force on three from one plus the negative, okay, of the force on three from two. This negative sign we added to take into consideration the fact that the force on three from charge two is to the left is in the opposite direction. And generally to the left is right. I mean, to the left is negative and to the right is positive. Okay, now we just plug the numbers in. F3 is 1.42 newtons minus 4.80 newtons. And then we get that the net force on three is minus 3.38 newtons. Now, what does that minus sign mean? That minus sign means that the net force on three from the other two charges, we add them all up, is to the left. The negative sign means the force is to the left. It's not a negative force, like less than zero. It's negative to the left, okay? And the magnitude of that force is 3.38 newtons, okay? So I think that was pretty straightforward. You have to make sure you take into consideration the fact that you do the directions of the forces first, then you use Coulomb's law to calculate the magnitudes, leave the negative signs out, convert to Coulombs, square the distance, which you divide, and then you come up with your answer. Okay, I think if you keep everything straight, don't lose your negative signs, it works out pretty easily. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that video helpful. If you found that video helpful, you can give me a thumbs up or a nice comment in the comment section below, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.